and they want to get rid of them. And I think it's not just China. You have countries all around the world that have loaded up on treasuries. They're going to sell. Is That's that the beginning I... of moving towards the exits? Because you've been saying the last few years that when we see them starting to dump U.S. bonds, that's the big sign. I think it is a big sign. And, you know, right now there's still speculators buying the dollar on the idea that the U.S. economy is sound and that the Fed's going to raise rates. But it's all because the Fed says it is. I mean, if you actually look at all the economic data that comes out every day. It's weak. The data hasn't been this weak since the Great Recession. Yet nobody pays attention to the actual data. They just look at Janet Yellen. And as long as Janet Yellen says everything is great, nobody cares what the data is. They're all waiting for the Pied Piper, Janet Yellen. It's, again, it's like, you know, the emperor has no clothes. No one wants to admit the emperor is naked until Janet Yellen says it, you know? Let me ask you this, and I want to go to some phone calls. Uh, you're making you put your crystal ball cap on, and I know you're not making a prediction here, but in your gut, what you tell your wife, what you tell your family, what you're telling our audience now, how do you see this going down the next six months? What do you see happening this fall? A lot of folks like Dent and others that have been pretty accurate like you, they think it's imminent uh, that it's going to get a lot worse a lot quicker, but we know they've got a lot of weird tricks up their sleeves. The market's so rigged now, interest rates, the stock market, that they can you know, suspend reality for a while longer, kind of like... Wiley Coyote runs out over the cliff, and for a minute he doesn't fall because he's not really in the real world. He's on, he's, you know, he's being drawn by Mel Blanc. <laughs> yeah, he, well, it's not until he looks down that he realizes he's no longer on the ground. And exactly. I think that, that Wiley Coyote phenomenon is going to happen because a lot of Americans don't realize there's nothing beneath their feet but air. And what's keeping it going is just the Fed's credibility. But how much longer can it maintain credibility by by bluffing it's going to raise rates but never delivering and if it actually does deliver on a rate hike it's just going to accelerate the collapse that much further because if the fed does raise rates by a quarter point the markets are going to start anticipating the next quarter and the next quarter and it's going to unravel even faster so they're damned that they do and they're there that they don't which is why i think they're going to take the path of least resistance which is leave rates at zero and keep pretending they're going to raise them until there's something that happens where they have to do qe4 and maybe it's going to be the jobs numbers i mean at some point these job numbers are going to turn south with everything else i mean all the other data has already turned to recession the only thing left is the employment data and that's coming but don't they admit most of the employment numbers are cooked anyways they don't admit that although janet yellen even in her last statement when, she, when they didn't raise rates, she said, we're still waiting to see improvement in the labor market. What improvement is she waiting for? If the unemployment rate is as low as it is and the, and the employment market is as great as she says it is, why does she need to improve more? That just proves she's lying. She knows that the labor market is lousy. And if it's lousy now in September, it ain't going to be any better in October or December. In fact, it's probably going to be worse. Well, do you think Dent and others are right then that they think by later this fall or winter we're going to see a huge uh, stock market plunge? Well, look, I, I don't think the Federal Reserve is going to allow a huge stock market plunge. I think at some point, if it looks like the market is in danger of that big a decline, QE4 is going to be announced. So they're not going to allow their own bubble to deflate. They spent years blowing air into it. They're not going to let it you know, implode. So she's going to stop the stock market from collapsing. If I thought that the Fed was actually going to raise rates the way everybody believes they're going to do, then the stock market would crash and maybe debt would be right. But if the Fed does what I believe they're going to do and you know comes with more QE, then it's the dollar that's going to crash, not uh, the uh, the stock market. And in fact, what's putting pressure on all the emerging markets, commodities, gold, is the belief that the Fed is going to tighten monetary policy. That's what's crushing the entire world. And until Janet Yellen admits she's not going to do that, uh, then it's not going to change. And sure. the irony of it is Janet Yellen is saying, I don't want to raise rates because of the problems overseas. The problems overseas are because she's going to raise rates or everybody thinks she's going to well, raise rates. Well, it's like rates, CNBC. Which means she can't. It's like CNBC famously a few years ago said, aren't we all just slaves of central banks? And then they cut the five guests all agreeing. I mean, this is really, I guess, the great question. Now can central banks and bureaucrats mm -hmm. suspend economic reality? And can they pump a bubble up to Zimbabwe proportions and not have any blowback from that? And I just think common sense says it can't. Now, look, all bubbles pop. Uh, and the problem is the bigger they get before they pop, the more damage 
when they pop. And this is the biggest one yet. And remember, you know, people, I was on CNBC and the guy Scott Nations was saying, Peter, how, could, how is it possible that you're right and everybody else is wrong? Well, you know what? <laughs> you know, that's what happens. That's what happened with the housing bubble. And again, I'm not the only one, but there are not that many of us. But yes, I was right and almost everybody was wrong. All the big banks, including the Federal Reserve, including Janet Yellen, were completely oblivious to the housing bubble and any of the consequences that were going to hit the economy when that bubble burst. I laid it out exactly the way it happened. Sure. And here we are again. Fast forward 2015. It's the same. Could it be Chicago? The same monitor. Could it mm -hmm. be? Could it be L.A.? Could it be uh, Puerto Rico going bankrupt? I mean, we don't know what the trigger war with Russia. I mean, who knows what could trigger this thing going crazy? Well, look, just just the threat of higher interest rates is what's doing it after seven years of zero percent. But my point is we are around the corner from a much worse economic crisis than 2008. But 2008 was still big. It was the worst downturn since the Great Depression, and nobody in the halls of power saw it. Nobody, nobody didn't in want academia, to see it. Nobody, in, nobody in Wall Street, nobody at the Fed, nobody. Just a handful of people right. that they thought were crackpots. Some of those crackpots got very rich, but you know, it, 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 very few people saw it. And now it's the same situation all over again. I agree. I want to go to some calls here on the Pontiff and get your take after we take one or two because it right. ties in economically. His answer is more government. Uh, Desi oh, yeah. <laughs> or, uh, in Louisiana, you're on the air. Thanks for holding your take. Uh, on His Excellency visiting uh, uh, Obama and this huge socialist love fest. Uh, go ahead. You're on the air. Well, uh, what an honor, Alex, to be on your show. I just want to thank my friend Nub, who turned me on to your show about two years ago. First time caller. Uh, you nailed this Pope, Alex. Uh, he's totally evil. Uh, him and uh, King Jihad, Barack Obama, two peas in a pod. Things that you talked about two years ago when I first listened, they're coming to pass. Uh, the Catholic Church in uh, the Vatican City over there, totally evil. I just wanted to uh, thank you for being on uh, for being on your show, uh, Alex, and uh, go to another caller. Thanks. Well, God bless you. We're going to go to break here in a moment come back with more on this. But I, I never get into religion. I don't bash Protestants, Catholics, Jews. Hindus, I mean, there's good people all over, but this Pope is so political, and he's here to lecture America how the, we couldn't have air conditioning. I mean, this is austerity, and it seems like him and Obama are joining forces. The UN's coming out of the closet for world government. This Pope's announced world government. What's going on, Peter Schiff? We're going to skip this network break. Yeah, you know, if the Pope really cared about the people, I mean, and again, you know, maybe he does, but if he really understood and wants to help, he should be embracing capitalism, freedom. That's what lifts people out of poverty. I mean, it's not government programs. Government programs create and perpetuate poverty. And we know that. It's a historical yeah. fact. Yes, he ought, instead of just reading the Bible, he should read history. He should understand what made America so wealthy in the first place. And it was the absence of government. Everybody wanted to come here. Yeah. Yes, he's here. You know, it, you know, we did more, certainly, to lift people out of poverty than any other country. Now, unfortunately, ever since the government declared war on poverty, poverty has been on the rise. But before the government decided to battle poverty, capitalism was destroyed. They started it. battling it in the 40s, poverty. and now we've got the biggest wealth redistribution, the biggest divide, the smallest middle class ever. Yeah, I mean, we, we need less government, right? Redistributing a shrinking pie is not the solution. Yet, you know, it sounds good, you know, but even, you know, in the Bible, they, you know, they, they talk about, well, you tied 10%. I mean, they don't even, they don't really, uh, you know, endorse or recommend socialism there. So I don't know, you know, why the, the church has officially embraced the doctrine that has so failed miserably uh, throughout time. I mean, look at these countries that have been communist. You know, look at the rampant poverty. I mean, look at all the poverty in Africa. I mean, it's not because of freedom and capitalism that there's so many poor people uh, in sub-Saharan Africa. I mean, look at what the governments are doing to their own people in these countries. Go there and lecture those governments. Now, the fact of the matter is, there are problems in America, but it's because the government is doing too much, not because they're not doing enough. Well, that's absolutely a fact. And he didn't criticize Fidel Castro and his half yeah. a million political dissidents in jail. He's going to come here and criticize our prisons, which would be fine if he criticized the communist prisons. I'm all for criticizing prisons. We just did it earlier yeah. in the hour. It's just it's just what why yeah. are, why is the whole power structure, whether it's Warren Buffett 
or bad mouthing capitalism when they've gotten so rich from it. Yeah, well, again, it's a lot of people like to be liked. You know, that's part of the problem because so many other people embrace socialism and it makes you look good if you, you know, you pretend or you show your compassion by how much you're in favor of these government programs. But of course, you know, being compassionate and generous with somebody else's money is very easy. And there are a lot of liberals that, that, that want to do that. But again, that's just theft rebranded as democracy, but it's still wrong. And if, you know, if the Pope is a religious man, and of course he is, he knows that theft is wrong, right? It, there's a commandment there that says don't steal. It doesn't have a little asterisk by it unless the government does it for you, right? You can't vote for other people to steal for you. If it's wrong to steal, then it's wrong to do it indirectly through elected politicians. Bingo. Bingo, absolutely on target. Shifting gears, I'm letting the calls bring up other topics that I'd like to ask you about. Uh, refugees, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and eight other countries won't take one single person. Saudi Arabia quarterback destabilizing uh, Syria, running those jihad forces. That's all admitted. It's been declassified. Our government's working with the radicals. Then they lecture us. Uh, Bill in Minnesota wants to comment on the, quote, refugees or migrants. I'm going to go to my neighbor's house and, hey, I'm moving into your bedroom. I want uh, food. I want my medical bills paid. I'm a migrant. I mean, it's 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 stealing. Uh, it's just. But why is the West the only group told we've got to pay for everything? Again, it's because of our Judeo-Christian ethic. They know we're the nicest people in the world. I'm not saying other countries are bad, but let's face it, we are literally a bunch of bleeding heart chumps, and it's killing us, folks. It's killing us. Bill in Minnesota, you're on the air with Peter Schiff. Welcome. Hey, honored to be on with both of you guys. Um, I got to say, a couple of weeks ago when you had an article up about uh, these migrants, and I just call them invaders. I mean, that's all they are. They're just invading countries that were sovereign and thinking that they can get a free ride. But here's the deal. You had an article up about how German officials were telling German women not to dress provocatively around these Muslims because they don't get it. They might rape you. Yeah, yeah, that, well, that's person, happening. This is political correctness. We have to give up our culture of freedom under their political... Uh, that's a great question. I'm going to go back to you, Bill, but I want to ask Peter Schiff this question. What do you make of the migrant crisis? What do you make of the politically correct, the radical liberals will never criticize radical Islam. I mean, I don't get it. Why won't the feminists, we've sent reporters and gone to feminist events, they will not say one word about radical Islam, and then they're telling German women, basically start conforming to Sharia law. What, what is the love affair with the left and radical Islam? Well, you know, I think they find it hard uh, to criticize because they don't want that criticism to blow back on themselves because people may be able to connect the dots and see what the similarities are. And, you know, they want to focus on, oh, the countries, you know, where the migrants are going, you know, what's wrong there? Why aren't they, you know, wealthy in the way they should? What about where these people are fleeing and what ideology and what type of governments they're fleeing from? I mean, that is the problem. It's the problem isn't that, you know, that, that, they're, that they're coming to certain countries, but why are they leaving the countries that they're leaving? And, of course, the only problems would be if these people walk into the, you know, the social welfare states of these other European countries, why don't we just that's have it. freedom? You know, it's we the welfare that's drawing it. It's the yeah, welfare. I mean, look, we had all these immigrants, way more immigrants were coming to New York, my grandparents among them, 1880, 1890, 1900, 1910. They were, they were flooding in and there was no problem. They were all absorbed into, into, the, into the culture, into the economy. They were productive. There was no welfare. There was no food stamps. There wasn't a single government program to help the immigrants that were coming to this country by the boatload, far more than the refugees do we have today. But there was no welfare. Was no problem. There was no welfare and migrants, whether they were from whether they were from Russia or whether they were from Ireland or from England or whether they were from wherever, they wanted to be Americans. Yeah, and they wanted to be Americans, not because there was a government to take care of them, because there was no government to bother them. They wanted freedom. That's what they came here for, and that's what they got, and we all benefited from it. They were escaping mafias. They were escaping. I was reading today how Italy can't even do business. The mafia's taken over. So more Italians want to leave and go somewhere else. I mean, it's the same deal. Just let, let me build my furniture. Let me make my shoes. Let me have my restaurant. Let me build my factory. Get off my back. That's what made this country great. Bill, yeah, anything and, else on that point? Yeah, I mean, it, it put a pit in my stomach after looking at the picture that you had on your story on InfoWars about how... German officials are telling German born and raised women 
how to dress around these new invaders. And it, it, you showed a girl in a miniskirt and how miniskirts are supposed to be banned now. Just don't do it because you might